Amen. Anybody need a supernatural move of God in their life? Just clap your hands. Come on. Hallelujah. I want us to look at something today. We're going to talk about a couple of things. You know, I did plan to speak on the importance of prayer, the power of prayer. But as I was preparing it, the Lord shifted my thinking um, as to the perspective of prayer. Okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about that, but i got to go all the way back to the book of Genesis. I want to show you something. I want you to see something. Tiana, good to see you. I want you all to see something here. Genesis 1.27. Genesis 1.27, King James Version. So God, somebody shout God, created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Hallelujah. I think I've, you know, I was going to extrapolate that, you know. Sometimes I wonder some of the things that God put in my mind, and I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. But anyways, <laughs> let me look at it from another um, translation. Um, I think I want to go to the amplified version and see how it explains. Okay. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness. Somebody shout likeness. In the image and likeness of God, he created them, male and female. So who created us? In what image did he create us? Whose image? Not for real. Whose image? Okay. That means that, that word, let me find the Hebrew word for that. That Hebrew word is selem, S-E-L-E-M, selem. It means resemblance, representative, or, or a representative figure. It means shape. Okay, so that's going to throw some of you all off. So what the Word of God is saying to us, God created us in his shape. All right. So look at yourself. That's how your God is shaped. Amen. He got a head. He got hands. He has feet. He has eyes. He has ears. He has a mouth. Yeah, we all know that part. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, we all believe he got the mouth. But many people don't believe that God is shaped like us. But the Bible clearly tells us that we are made in his image. All right, see, some of y'all still don't believe it. When you go before a mirror, whose image do you see? You see yourself. Am I right? And what you see is your image. Okay? And God says, we are made in his image. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, say, this is what God looks like. Are you hearing me? And not, not only his image, but in his likeness, characteristics, attributes. <laughs> Authority. We are made and given godlike authority. Godlike powers is given unto us. Amen. That's what the word of God says. And so he said to man, listen, he said to man, verse 28, and God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue. Have dominion <laughs> over every living 
thing that moves on the earth. How could you have dominion if you're not given authority? How could you have dominion if you have no power? How could you have dominion over something if you're not stronger than it? How can you dominate what dominates you? You can't. So when God made us, he gave us dominating power. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have dominating power in you. Amen. Why we're made like our heavenly father. Okay, all right, we're going to break it down. Y'all getting quiet on me. Some of you, Lord have mercy, pastor's lost his mind. No. We are tripart beings. Y'all agree with that? How are we tripart beings? We're what? Body, soul, and? So we are made up or we dwell in realms of existence. Are you hearing me? We dwell in a physical realm, but also in a spiritual realm. So we are bi-dimensional beings. Are you hearing me? That sound good to you. Let me say it again. I'm a bi-dimensional being. I want us to see that because let me explain that. We exist in time as physical beings, but in eternity as spiritual beings. We are unique in existence because we can have a physical and spiritual experience at the same time. Are you hearing me? Let's look at scripture because I want to... Everything must be scripturally sound, correct? Because if it ain't scripturally sound, then it's not going to make sense to you. All right. Go to Ephesians 1 and verse 20. Ephesians 1 and verse 20. Do the King James Version. We're going to look at this. Because I'm going to show you how we're going to totally change our praying, our speaking, our thinking. Because once we really know who we are, everything about us won't change. Ephesians 1, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised them from the dead and set him on his own right hand in heavenly places. Somebody shout heavenly places. Not earthly places. Heavenly. Let's get that right. Christ is where? In heaven heavenly places, in the spiritual place. Okay, look at this. Far above principalities, far above power, far above might, far above dominion, and far above every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So simply means when this whole world, or this system is passed away, the next world system, Christ is still far above it all. Y'all see that? And watch this. And has put him. So who has put him? God, his father, has put all things under his feet. And watch this. And gave him to be the head of over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. That's a whole lot of words. But all it's saying is that God has highly exalted Christ, put him above every principality, every power, every might, every dominion, in every realm, in every season, in every world, this one and the next one to come. 
But then it tells us something that, that we are his body. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait a second. Is that what it says? He's put everything is under his feet and given him to be the head over all things, the church. The church is the body of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. And so there is no separation from head and body. <laughs> Somebody going to get it in a minute. They'll get it in a minute. So, so if the head is far above principalities and power, <laughs> where is the body? Are y'all getting this? And who is the body? The church, the real church. God's called out ones, the ecclesia, those who live according to God's word, those who have the seal of God on their lives by the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I think I better say a disclaimer here is that it's not, not every building where people gather and somebody stand before them is the church. Okay. Because if they're not led by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God is not in them, then there are none of His. Amen. There's going to come a time when people say, haven't we preached in your name? Haven't we done miracles in your name? And what Jesus says, depart from me. Why? Because I never knew you. Amen. So let's get back to this. So all things, somebody shout all things. All things is put under his feet and given to him to be the head over the church, and the church is, it, is his body and the fullness of him. So it's the church that fills him. Amen. The church fills him. And wherever he is, that's where the church is. Remember I says we operate in two realms at the same time. Amen. And watch. Go to Ephesians 2, verse 5. Um, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ, for by grace you are saved, watch this, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in where? In who? <laughs> oh, wait a second. So, physically, we are 3301 Riverside Drive. Spiritually, where are we? Say it real loud. Say it with confidence. We're in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, we got to get this. Because we are so used to the physical realm we pay very little attention to the spiritual realm because it does not come naturally to us. It must be taught. It comes by revelation. It comes by a spiritual understanding. Amen. And the reason why many Christians struggle is because they don't see themselves sitting high. They see themselves sitting low. Matter of fact, a lot of Christians pray with the perspective that heaven is above their heads. They pray with the perspective that Satan is above their heads. They pray with the perspective that their troubles is above their heads. When the Bible clearly tells us that all principalities, all powers, all might, all dominion is where? Under your feet. <laughs> oh, glory to God. For God has what? Raised us up. 
Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has raised me up. There was a time that this was our domain. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, God has quickened us, resurrected us, gave us new life. Now as any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He is heavenly, not just earthly. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm a heavenly being, baby. Look at me, look, I'm, I'm heavenly, all right? Somebody got to get that in a minute. Turn to somebody else and say, I'm heavenly. And I want you to mean it because I want you to see it. Because our prayer perspective will change when we fully understand where we truly are and how we're going to pray for breakthroughs. And I want us to see it. Now, in the eternal realm, somebody shout the eternal realm, or, or the spiritual realm, everything works by word. God doesn't use his hand to do anything. He uses his mouth. He speaks it, and it comes into existence. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. He speaks it, it comes into existence. Amen. And so everything, somebody shout everything, in the spiritual realm, works by words. Now remember what I told you. We're made in God's likeness, in his image. He gave us dominion authority. He raised us up far above principalities, far above powers, far above might, gave us dominion. And understand, everything in the spiritual realm works by word. Amen. Words bring into existence what was in the mind of God. It was in his mind, then he spoke it, and it came into existence. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, words are powerful. <laughs> I've said it before, I want to say it again. Words are not just for information. Words are for creation. <laughs> All right, you'll get that in a minute. In John 1, verse 1, 1 to 3, and we're going to see this in, because we're going to stand and we're going to pray with a whole different perspective today because I want us to see something, and we're going to, we're going to see miracles take place because we have an understanding that everything in the seen came from the unseen. And so words have to be spoken from the spiritual realm to cause movement and activity in the physical realm. All right. Go to John. John 1. We, don't, we walk into scripture this morning. Y'all don't mind, right? Y'all don't mind? Y'all good? Y'all still awake? Is this, is this starting to make sense to you? All right, look at this. In the beginning was what? What was in the beginning? What was in the beginning? And the word was, and the word, the same was in the, with who? And all things were made by, oh, I'll stop right there. All things were made by who? Who was him? But him in the form of the? Hey, there you go. Hey, you see y'all are getting it now. In the beginning was the word. That is the subject of this particular passage. In the beginning was the? The word was with? And the word was? Who is this particular scripture talking about? The word. The same word was in the beginning with God. Watch this. And all things were made by the word. And without him, or rather without the word, 
was not anything made that was made. Oh, glory to God. That's good enough for me. I can take my seat now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the, and the word was with, and the word was, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by the, and without the, was anything, was nothing was made. Oh, glory to God. Mm. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Nothing is going to be made without a word. Everything that was made was made by a word. Whether good or evil, the word preceded it. If we're going to have change in our lives, it must be preceded by a... Mm, Y'all good, y'all good. Hallelujah. Mm. All right, look at Hebrews 11, verse 3, and go to the Passion Translation. Do I want us to see this? Donnie, give me a little music in the background there. Thank you. Watch. Watch this. What does it say? Faith does what? Empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of... Oh, Lord. Look at that. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, we can bless God even at a greater level. So watch, I like this part. Faith, somebody shout faith. It empowers us to see it. See, we, we got to get that. You see, you see, we cannot see it without faith. We cannot receive it without faith. Are you hearing me? And we cannot, hmm, Jesus. We cannot benefit from it without faith. Some of us trying to get the the spiritual realm to do for us what we don't have faith for. (laughs) Faith empowers us to see that I can cause things to come into existence by a word. Because everything in the spiritual realm functions on word. Are you hearing me? And if everything in the spiritual realm functions on word, and it's the spiritual realm that causes things to take place in the physical realm, in order for us to activate, in order for us to affect the physical realm, we must get in the spirit. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We're trying to do things in our flesh that can't be done. (laughs) Ain't no power in the flesh. The power is in the spirit. Jesus says, my word, there are what? Spirit and life. It's time for the church to understand that if we want change in the flesh, physical, we must begin it. It must be initiated in the spiritual. And in the spiritual, we must understand who we are. We must understand the dominion God has given us. We must understand the authority that God has given us and see ourselves above and not beneath. Hallelujah. See yourself above your problems. See yourself above your issues. See yourself above your sickness and your disease. 
See yourself above whatever the adversary is trying to do in your life. See yourself above it. The devil is not over your head. The devil does not have authority over your life. You have authority over him. Why? Because we are the body of Christ. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus far above. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time that you recognize. <laughs> mm. Woo! Tell somebody, say, time you recognize. So watch this now. Faith empowers us to see. <laughs> Faith opens your spiritual eyes. Faith opens your spiritual understanding. Faith allows you to know what you could not know in the flesh. Faith reveals it to you. Hallelujah. Go to Hebrews 1 and verse 3. Same Passion Translation. Y'all loving this? Y'all getting anything out of this? I hope so. Because I believe the Lord gave this to me this morning. Amen. I'm preaching, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We got, we got just a few more verses and then, what time is it? 10.50 already. Lord, have mercy. Just start getting good. Hebrews 1, verse 3. Bring it on to school. Watch this. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature, his mirror image. He holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his what? Huh. He accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins, and then did what? Took his seat on the highest throne. Where? So where is Christ right now? Where is he? He's at the, the left hand, sitting behind him, sitting in front of him. He's at the right hand of God. The right hand signifies the hand of honor, the hand of authority, and the hand of power. Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We already read that we are seated in Christ. I said, y'all going to get it in a minute. <laughs> and, and we are the body of Christ. Amen. The church, somebody shout, the church is the body of Christ. And because he is seated at the right hand, the body is at the right hand. Because he's seated in a place of power, the body is seated in a place of power. Because he's seated in a place of authority, the body is in a place of authority. Because he's seated in a place of power, the body is in a place of power. Stop walking around defeated. Stop walking around like a victim. God has raised you up and seated you in a place of power and authority. Somebody open your mouth and say, I recognize who I am and where I am. I may be here physically, but spiritually, I'm in high heavenly places. Somebody better give God a shout. Somebody better give God a praise because where I am seated, the devil can't touch me. Where I am seated, Lord, have mercy. Can't touch this. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor to neighbor. I'm seated. I'm, 
of God. Listen church, who are we? We are the body of Christ. When the world look at us, they should see the express nature of God on the church. They should see the glory of God on the church. For Jesus says the same glory that the Father has given him is the same glory he has given unto us. We better open our mouth and celebrate and give God thanks because God has already glorified you. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is glory on you. It's time for you to recognize you're in a place of power. You're in a place of authority. You're in a place of dominion. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, say, thank you, Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, recognize recognize where God has seated you you're not beneath but you have been set above you're not under any issue you are above it you're not weak but you are strong you are seated in heavenly places your praise is from above your worship is from above oh glory to God your singing is from above all that you do in the spirit is from above we are in the presence of God at his right hand and when you recognize it oh glory to God you won't run from the devil but you will make a sand and decree and declare God has given me authority over you. Touch your neighbors and neighbor, no fear. All faith. <laughs> Woo! You know why? You know why we we fail as Christians? It's because we really don't know who we are. We don't understand how God has made us in his likeness. Given us dominion. <sighs> Raised us up. Mm. seated where right hand honor authority power come on clap your hands and say God thank you watch this now remember that the word says, everything that is manifested in the seen realm came from a word that was spoken from the unseen realm. The Bible said that God is seeking for true worshipers. Those who worship how? In spirit. Oh, glory to God. Once we begin to worship God in spirit, we are now positioned to speak what we want to see in the earth realm. Once we begin to worship God in spirit, we now have taken authority over what's taken place 
in the physical once we begin to worship God in spirit we understand that all things are possible you may ask the question Jesus how could you possibly say all things are possible to him that believe he simply means that that when we are when we understand who we are and where we function from nothing is impossible so touch your neighbor say neighbor your healing is possible your deliverance is possible your change is possible life coming back to your marriage is possible mm. you can make it through this it's all possible I will live and not die because I will speak a word of life from the spirit realm and when I speak it from the spirit realm it must manifest in the earth realm for every manifestation in the earth realm came from a word that has been spoken from the spirit somebody better jump up on their feet and begin to speak like the spiritual being you are open your mouth and begin to speak and decree and declare what you want to come into existence in this realm come on open your mouth Come on, speak life. Come on, speak life. Decree and declare what you want to see. Speak your prosperity. Speak your help. Speak your health. Speak your protection. Speak the favor of the grace of God. Speak it over your life. Whatever you want to see, get into the spirit and speak it. Mm. touch your neighbor and say neighbor where are you seated right now come on tell them tell them where you seated tell them tell them where you're seated mm. now where is your adversary where are your problems where are your issues? Where are your sicknesses? Where are your diseases? Where are your troubles? It's all where? Hallelujah. It's time for the church to begin to walk and take dominion and put all your issues under your feet because you are above it and when you take dominion and when you're walking and anything under your feet means you have dominated it oh glory to God if it's under your feet you have subdued it if you if it's under your feet you have been victorious over it whatever is over your head you have not won that battle yet but when you win that battle you put it under your feet you let the adversary know he's defeated he can't win he is under your feet somebody better step better walk around take authority decree and declare it that is Somebody better shout. Somebody better 
better shout. Somebody better shout. Come on, your healing, your miracle is under, is under my feet. Every issue is under my feet. It's under my feet. It's under. Tap two or three people say it's under. It's under. It's under. It's under. It's under my feet. Mm. <laughs> Woo! Come on, church. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody better shout, I'm not dying, I'm living. I'm not losing, I'm winning. Hey! 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 hey. If you can't think of anything else to say, just say, Whatever troubles you, it's under your feet. Come on, speak, say, it shall trouble me no more. Whatever you shall depress me will depress me no more. It's under God has given you power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, all the powers of the enemy nothing is left out he has raised you up far above principalities far above powers far above rulers oh glory to God touch your neighbor say neighbor it's time to pray with a heavenly perspective Pray from the Spirit to cause movement in the physical realm. Come on, somebody open their mouth now. Begin to pray. Father! Father! We praise you and glorify you. We thank you for the authority you have given unto us. Thank you for the word that you have placed in our mouth. You said words are spirit. Words bring life. Words can bring death. Words can bring life. Words for good. Words for evil. I pray now in the name of Jesus that as I release words, life begin to take place in my existence in my world things begin to change i release a word of healing deliverance power i say what you say that is your will that i prosper and be in good health i say what you say that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory i say what you say I will live and not die. I say what you say. I'm above, not beneath. I'm blessed, not cursed. I say what you say. You anoint my hair with oil. My cup running over. I say what you say. What you say, all things must. 
us work together for my good. I say what you say. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Mm. I believe the power of God is here and the anointing of God is here. Somebody shout miracles, signs, wonder, unusual. <laughs> I speak an unusual anointing on you today. If you receive it, lift your hands. The anointing to do strange things. I speak that anointing over your life. That you will see your word take form. Bring change. You will see your word manifested in the physical realm. I speak over your life that your words are anointed and as you release your word, things begin to shift in your life. Change begin to happen in your life. Crooked path become straight the weak become strong the sick is healed the bound is delivered and set free i speak over your life that the word is nigh unto you hallelujah this is the season of the supernatural supernatural things gonna take place in your life lift your hands and say Lord thank you don't tell God how to do things just expect him to do things tell him what you need and let him bring it into existence you decree it he establishes it hallelujah Touch your neighbor and neighbor. I can do all things because it is Christ that strengthens me. Simple means it's God, it is Christ who empowers me. For it's in Him I live, I move, and have my being. Would you put your hands together and celebrate God?